Okay, so yeah, so practice your long tones. And I also um, advocate when you practice your long tones to do crescendo and decrescendo. Again, so you can hear what you sound like when you play loud. Because what you don't want is the sound to deteriorate when you play louder. And this can be the limitation of your mouthpiece. Um, so you, you want to get a decent sound loud. You don't want it to spread out. You want it, you want it concentrated. Um, so, because I, I know when I first started playing in youth orchestras, and you may experience this too, is you don't, suddenly don't want to sound, you don't want to play out because you don't want to disrupt the sound, and that's not what we're after. We're after a forte sound that sounds just as good as your piece sound, your piano sound, it's just louder. And, uh, yeah, so play that, play those notes all over, to get a decent sound on all of your notes. That's the first thing. Now, in terms of legato, first thing you need to realise, and this, um, when, you're, when you're teaching beginning students, the first thing that they need to work out is often when students start, they associate a change in note with a change in tonguing. Now this is a very bad way to start um, because really legato is just a long note moving the fingers and what my teachers often used to do with me was uh, to turn the clarinet round and just have me blow a long note and then they'd move the fingers and it's like well, wow I can play legato it's just you've got to get the concept out of your head that a change in note is a change in breathing or tonguing. So that what you need to remember, you need to separate from your mind what your fingers are doing and what the rest of you is doing. So, I mean, starting like that where the, you turn the clarinet around and the, the teacher plays notes. So you need, you need to separate it so that even if you're moving the fingers, this doesn't change. And that's a difficult concept. But if you can instill in the student's mind that even they're moving their fingers, this doesn't change. And this can, this can take years. Um, and also, if you're not confident, um, this is the first thing that goes, um, as in performance. Um, that's the first thing that goes. And if I might go back to breathing again, um, and this is a little tip, is that work out when you're going to breathe in a piece when you're practicing it and then be a little bit um, err on the lowest, uh, err, on the, err on the easier side because uh, I've got a number of pieces, duets I'm playing at the moment and uh, duet work can be very hard because you don't have a piano accompaniment therefore you don't have a nice sort of four or five bars off you're playing continuously and in a number of my pieces it is physically impossible to blow that long it's a very fast technical passage so what I do is and no one's going to you know sort of slap you over the hand with this is you work out if you can leave out the odd note so if you've got a heap of semi quaver runs well, maybe leave one out and make it a quaver so that you can get a quick breath in. Um, so what you do is you plan your breaths. And I've got, um, you know, I've got, you know, notes all over my part, you know, um, for when to breathe. Because when it comes to performance, if you're not confident, breathing is the first thing that goes. Um, and I very, very much know that uh, having suffered from crippling, pr crippling performance nerves myself and I've just psyched my way out of it and uh, I don't get nerves anymore. I just go in with an extreme confidence, you know, and it's like, well, if I fluff that run, I fluff the run, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. So plan your breaths and err on the side of caution. 
and uh, if you do that you will find performing so much easier. But let's get to legato. So the first thing you need to remember is that the heart of good legato is not changing the breath. And, uh, and also it's a fairly relaxed fairly relaxed um, sort of embouchure as well. You want to get what sounds like a liquid uh, because if you listen to the very best clarinet plays, players the sound just sounds liquid. You know, you don't, you don't realise that they're playing tens of thousands of notes on the one breath. It just, it just comes out. It's a bit like, you know, a singer um, is, uh, I mean, it's especially important with a singer because you you don't sort of tongue in singing. Um, I mean, sure you you um, you say different words, but the association of words to notes isn't a one-on-one. -on -one. You may have one word to many notes. So, ah, so I'm not much of a singer. Oh, you know, uh, unless they're singing Baroque stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh. um, and I, I really recommend listening to as many singers as you can to get that similar liquidity of sound. So, I would start. I would start very, very simply. Start on a C. And then just lift the fingers up and see how you go. Okay, more to come.